Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Get Fit With Me Expanding Your Physical and Mental Fitness Group. This group is for individuals who are ready to expand not just their physical fitness, but also their mental fitness. So much we think about that, we think about a healthy lifestyle is only what we move and how we move our bodies and things like that. But a lot of it is reframing those bad habits that we've been doing, reframing our mindset on things. So there's also mental fitness that is involved to a healthy lifestyle. So this week, I did not realize that the topic of cardio, um, we were going to have so many opinions on it. Hello, Tanya. Thank you for joining us. So I didn't realize cardio was going to have so many different opinions. Um, I will say that a majority of you guys on the post said that you hated it or you dreaded cardio. Um, and not very many of you had a love-hate relationship like me, but then there were others um, that said they preferred cardio or they actually enjoyed it. Um, I do know that one of the people who said they enjoyed it, I have taught her some of the ways that I am going to be teaching you guys today. Hey, Jamie on Facebook, happy to have you here. For all you guys watching live, I want to know if you did not answer on the anticipation post yesterday, do you love or do you hate cardio? Um, for you guys on the live with me here, we will be going around. Um, before we get into it, though, I want to let you guys know that if you're watching live on Facebook, feel free to hit that Zoom uh, link right there and jump in. You are going to get the most out of these conversations by being on these calls. Um, Tanya last week was here with us, and she got to have a bunch of questions answered. It was only her. So anytime you jump on these, you guys can ask personal questions, and I can give you more specific answers than just a generic answer. Um, that I'm going to give if there's not very many people or there's nobody. So send me your questions, jump on and be live with us. Um, so I, today we're talking about cardio. Before we go around and get to know everybody in the room, I want to first say that I have always been a sports person. I loved sports. I loved just being out there and running. Um, I've ran 225Ks and a half marathon. And there's a lot of things that I've done that involve cardio. And I promise you, I've not loved it the entire time until I found some of these things that I incorporate and that I'm going to share with you guys later today. So as we get started today, I want to know from everyone on the Zoom calling you guys live where you're from who you are, and do you love or you hate cardio? And there is gonna be one more question. The other question is gonna be, what is what do you currently do for cardio? Um, whether you hate it or you love it, just I wanna know what you currently do for cardio. Um, I'm gonna kind of pick on you guys, I'm gonna be honest. So Tanya, let's have you get started. Who you are, where you're from, do you love or you hate, and what do you do? Uh, my name is Tanya Wemhoff. I'm from Clarkson, Nebraska, the middle of nowhere. I'm an HR consultant and I don't like cardio. <laughs> what do you currently do for cardio? Okay, you got me talked into this and I'm now on day three. I've, I've upped it to four days a week. Now it was three and I was going, um, <laughs> I was going at a pace at 2.7 miles an hour on my treadmill for 30 minutes. Now I'm doing intervals. Uh, I try. I tried to do it. There's like three minute intervals in the 30, so it's there's 10 of them. So I tried to do at least three at 2.9, and two at 2.8, and then the rest at 2.7. Nice. I love the interval work. We're going to talk more about that later. So I love that you've already incorporated that in because um, I will have you share on your experience of the interval work later on. So I appreciate you sharing that. Thank you. Mm. Valisa, who are you? Where are you from? Do you like cardio or not? And what do you do for cardio? All right. Hello, I am Valisa Brisley from Ann Arbor area. Um, I do not enjoy cardio very much. Um, 
it's one of those things that the exercises themselves, I don't necessarily mind is that I have a hard time breathing during them. So I haven't been able to get to a point where it's comfortable and my breathing gets regulated. It's like, I have a hard time breathing and then, you know, chest pains and it just becomes uncomfortable for me. Um, but to get around it, um, instead of running, then I will kind of power walk. Like I really enjoy doing that. Um, I do jump rope a little bit um, with my kids. Um, I like to do Zumba. So dancing, I find that um, more enjoyable than just like doing burpees and jumping jacks. I, I don't. <laughs> so burpees, I think, are um, a form of torture. Yes, they are. And you've come to enough of my classes that I think I've only had you guys do them once because I really don't yes. enjoy the movement. So yeah. I'm with you on that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But I definitely like when you have your cardio classes of giving some variations. So like I can still feel I'm doing an activity that increases my heart rate without feeling like I have chest pains so so that I can enjoy it to finish the activity. Well, I'm happy to have you here. And I love that you said Zumba and dancing. That is something that is a non-traditional cardio thing that we will talk about later. Um, so I will ask a little bit more about that as we move through. Um, so first things first, why is cardio important? Do either of you guys know why cardio would be important? Tanya? It's good for your heart. You're right. Is it, why do you think it's good for your heart? Do you have any guess? Is it because there's different paces and different changes? You get it up beating a little faster so it gets variety? So sort of, there are two types of cardio that you can do. You can do a type of cardio that people also hear as hit or interval. Whereas you go from a steady state cardio and then you give your heart a little spike and then you come down. That allows your body to practice um, recovering very quick to get back to your steady state and to know what to do if you have to all of a sudden, a bear is chasing you. You you're able to take off and that heart rate's able to spike and you're able to hang on to that. Um, the other type of cardio is called steady state cardio. That is those long prolonged periods of walking, running, where your heart rate is just about the same all the way through. They both have their benefits to them, but overall the benefit is to allow that heart to get stronger, which allows your heart to work more efficiently which means you can do everyday tasks with ease. Have you ever realized that being out of practice, so I'm not, you're never out of shape, you're just out of practice, that it's been a while and it's, you're kind of out of breath walking up and down those stairs in your house. Have you ever felt like walking down mm -hmm. the lane or doing something that's a normal everyday activity is kind of causing you a little bit of heavier breathing than normal? That right there, is we have not been working our heart. So our heart has to work harder, which means we breathe heavier during easy everyday activities. That if we just added a little bit of cardio into our life, those everyday activities would be with ease. So that can be walking the dog, walking up the stairs, doing laundry, taking the trash out. Um, for some of us, it could be even just standing for long periods of time, could raise that heart rate a lot. So it is really good for our heart. Yes, that is the main reason for cardio. That is perfect, Tanya. Other things it can do is it can help maintain weight loss or it can help increase weight loss. There are a bunch of, there's a bunch of things out there that the only thing you have to do to get weight loss is to do cardio. That is not the case. I will have a whole other topic on that. But doing cardio and adding intentional movement through cardio will help aid in weight loss or help you maintain your weight loss. It will help lower your blood pressure. And if you are at any risk, if you have any risk factors for heart disease, whether it's genetically, whether it's you are just out of practice and you've had some bad habits that have kind of piled on and now you're on medication, 
doing some cardio is going to help make that heart stronger and your risk factors can decrease that the more, the healthier we can get that heart. I have clients who come off of their medication for things. So are you a client, are you a person who is on a lot of medication that a little more cardio and a little more resistance training would help get you off of that? It's very possible. So although we think of the, it's good for your heart, you can lose weight. There's so many other amazing benefits to it. Um, so just when you're thinking about how much you dread it, reframe that to, at least I'm taking this, reframe your thought on, I deserve to have a healthy heart. I'm going to do this because I deserve it. Because you were going to put in the work to move forward with it. Um, Jamie had a good question. How much cardio should you do with strength? Um, it is suggested you do 150 minutes of cardio a week. That's kind of a lot, especially if you don't do very much right now, isn't it? Kind of a lot. Start small. I've shared this tip with Tanya. Add just one minute each time you do cardio. Over time, you will eventually reach the 150 minutes that the CDC says, the certification that I have. So although 150 minutes is very large and daunting, don't think about it. Think about one little, is it 30 seconds you're adding on? Is it a minute? Maybe you're adding two minutes. Maybe you're only adding 10 seconds. Whatever that is, choose that little bit that you can increase that you are comfortable with and that will add up over time. When it comes to strength training or resistance training, I am a big believer in you do not work out seven days a week. Your body needs rest, your body needs recovery. That I will usually do two to three days of cardio and two to three days of strength. So really that's six, but my strength and cardio days are sometimes a mixture. So I'll do a little bit of cardio and then I'll add a little weight after. So two days of strength training is a good amount um, and two to three days of cardio. But if you do cardio every day of the week and it's for a very short period of time, do what is best for you and your schedule. If you know you can't sit down and do cardio for hours on end, don't do it. Choose the amount of time that is good for you and your schedule because that's the only way you're going to commit to it. Any questions so far? How are you guys feeling with all this? Good. Good. No questions? Okay. So, okay. When you think of cardio, what do you think of? What are some activities that come to mind right away? They were already kind of talked about. What are some activities that come to mind for you guys when I say the word, go do some cardio today? I used to think running, but since I have a smashed hip, I broke my hip in 86. So it's mended, you know, and I, I'm okay. But, you know, I, it's not something that works for me. Other than running, do you consider your walking cardio? Well, now that I've put in the intervals, yes. <laughs> Belisa, what type of things do you consider cardio? I know it seems strange, but when I think of the word cardio, it's like all the extreme stuff. So running over walking, biking, um, going for a hike. Um, some of the intense, like jump rope, jumping jacks, burpees, you know, those, um, more intense repetitive exercises. I think my brain goes to like those extreme ones instead of more of the ones that I can enjoy that still have the same results. But I do think of those ones first when I hear the word. So would you consider Gaga ball with the girls cardio? Yes, but not at first. Yeah. Is it something it's fun. that's fun? So, <laughs> I think of cardio as somehow it's going to be unenjoyable and treacherous, but yeah. So I need to find more enjoyable ones that I will participate in more often. You are not alone in that. The top 
the top things, if you were to Google cardio, jumping jacks, burpees, jump rope, walking, biking, jogging, and running. There's a lot of things that I do that get my heart rate up, get me breathing that are not on that list. So think for a second, what are some things, like a Gaga ball was a great example there. Tanya, what are some things that you do? Do you and your husband do anything? Like a lot of times we do things with our significant others and we don't realize our heart rate's up. We don't realize how good it is for us because we're having fun. Well, actually married to a farmer who's now irrigating, he leaves the house at six and doesn't get home till 6.30. And so then we have to eat and I can't eat after seven. So it's, <laughs> it's a little hard. And um, he has uh, just had his hip replaced in January. So he's doing really well. He had a knee replacement uh, two and a half years ago. So he's not one that really wants to do much of anything that's exercise related. So what do you do with your grandkids when you're with them? Ah. Oh. Well, when I'm with my grandkids, you know, like we'll go to the zoo. So we'll walk like, you know, three or four hours. You don't even know that you've done it. Those things, because your grandkids aren't slow walkers, I bet. I bet they don't drag their feet and you're the ones walking in front of them. <laughs> Mine are older, so they usually beat me. <laughs> so with that being the case, that right there is cardio. You trying to stay up with them. It may not feel like that because you're not sitting down, making a plan to do it in your planner, but mm -hmm. you're getting your heart rate up when you see your grandkids. And the more of that kind of fun things you can do, the more fun it's going to be for you, the better it's going to be for your heart, and the longer you're going to be able to do these things with the people we love. True. So Lisa, what other things come to mind for you that are fun? Um, I have a few ideas. So Valisa, Tanya is my aunt. So I know a lot about her life. Um, so I have a lot of ideas for her. Excellent. I was going to say some that came to mind of being more fun, enjoyable than thinking of like exercise um, are when we go hunting because we never get to just drive, you know, to the blind. We are parked a ways away and carrying, you know, guns, chairs, decoys, whatever. So I was like, that to me, that can count um, as cardio in those months. I'm um, gardening, like sometimes it's slow and more enjoyable. And there's other times where um, the pace is more rapid. Um, so I figured that can count, um, doing stuff around the farm, walking instead of taking the tool cat, <laughs> that will help. Um, yeah. And then the different activities that the kids and I do now that stuff's open back up again. Um, that's nice to visit and get in the steps that way. Throwing the ball with the dog, taking the dog yeah. for a walk. We know she doesn't walk slow. So no. <laughs> it's thinking through, <laughs> it's thinking through those things that feel easy, but are harder than us just walking through the house. You're yes. getting your heart rate up. You're making that heart work, which is helping you in the long run. So get creative. So other things when you Google, I, I love Google because I just love what like magazines. So I take like what magazines say and I kind of laugh at it. Um, so their top thing was hiking. Felisa, that does not sound enjoyable for you, it sounds like. Um, <laughs> There's bugs. But, the bugs are killing me right now. So another thing that I didn't think of is the trampoline. So I don't, if you have kids, there's probably that big trampoline. Or my nanny kids have one of those small ones that's like one person. I jump on that thing for four minutes and I'm exhausted. But I don't think of it as cardio because it's fun. Right. Hula hooping. Um, there's hula hooping classes out there. Row <laughs> machine. Um, 
trampoline, rowing machine, hula hoop, any sort of sports, whether that's table tennis, pickleball, um, anything where you're just moving, um, hiking, swimming. I have oh, done, swimming. swimming is a great one. Whether you are low impact, just walking through the water, you are swimming laps or you're doing a class, that's a lot of resistance on the body. You get that weird feeling of you're sweating, but you're not because you're in water. So swimming is a great one. Uh, any sort of classes, kickboxing, dancing, such as Zumba classes. Um, I know we used to have an Xbox Connect growing up and we would do the wipeout. So it scans your body and you had to like jump over things and go under. I was exhausted as a kid. I can't imagine doing that as an adult and how tired I would be. Um, walking the stairs. Something as easy as you're gonna walk the stairs four times. You're gonna get your heart rate up. You're gonna be working those muscles. And then power walking. It doesn't have to be those zero to a hundred to count as cardio. It can be zero to two. It can be zero to five. It can be zero to seven. Choose whatever your intensity level is and just work a little bit harder than what your baseline is for a prolonged period of time. Prolonged can be four minutes. 14 minutes or 40 minutes, whatever that is to you, as long as you are able to do something for an amount of time. What other ideas do you guys have for unique things that now that I've read off some of those things on the list, what other things kind of come to mind for you, if anything? Cleaning house, especially mm -hmm. when I'm having to vacuum the stairs. Yes. Mopping. Yeah. Nope. Mopping always gets my heart rate up. I don't want any of that stuff on the ground. I'm going to work really hard to get that stuff off. Yeah, I was going to say cleaning. I just um, cleaned out the attic. I've been storing old clothes from the kids. And I went through and sorted sizes. And I kept having to go up and down the stairs, get a new bag. And so, yeah, that got my heart rate up this afternoon. Um, grocery shopping. I try and do more power walking. That helps me get in and out quicker too. I've been doing a lot better starting on the outside. I'm more intentional about it. So Tanya, to what Lisa just said, I have shared in the past, when you grocery shop, start on the outside of all the aisles. So do your milk, do your dairy, do your meats, do your veggies, and see if you've gotten everything you need. Once then, then look at the sign and only go down the aisles of the set, like if you need pasta, only go down the pasta aisle. You will end up saving so much stuff that you don't necessarily need, but marketing tells us that we want and we need it. Mm -hmm. um, so think about that. Do the perimeter of the store first, and then if you need to go down an aisle, then go down your aisles. Wow. I go up and down every aisle just so I get more steps in. See, it, but I stay really close to my list. Good. I don't get a lot of anything extra. You have good and, willpower. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I get tempted by, oh, it's on sale and I will use that, oh. but I don't necessarily, it's not the best choice. So trying to be more smart about those purchases of the right kind of foods instead of all the processed, easy stuff. Yeah, I try not to do a lot of process, but that's hard. Mm -hmm. It really is. And my husband won't eat vegetables, so now I, I'm forcing him. You know, I keep throw, you know, throwing things in there. And then he'll eat just a little bit, but I figure it's better than nothing. Right. A really good hack. If you like spaghetti squash, make up a spaghetti squash, take just one fourth of it and mix it in with normal spaghetti noodles, bake it with your sauce and your meat. He won't even know it's in there. Hopefully he's not at home right now hearing this. Um, no, but no, but he doesn't eat pasta much. Okay. Anything and you know, one thing pro I find hard is when you use spaghetti squash or some of those others, they're impossible to cut. And then somebody told me to put it in the microwave poke a few holes in it. It's, oh. if, if you can get a few, if you can get a few knives in it, throw it in the microwave. Um, or if you have an Instapot, 
poke a few holes, throw it in the Instapot with a little bit of water at the bottom. I think it's like five minutes. Thing splits right open. It's amazing. Mm. Yeah, I, I made the mistake of trying to cut it and losing a few fingers possibly um, without softening exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> Most definitely. So if you guys choose to do something more conventional, such as the walking, the running, the biking, there are options to make it more fun. Tanya talked about one of them already, and it'd be the intervals. Do you want to talk about, I know you still don't love it, but do you want to talk about why you kind of like the intervals a little bit more than just the steady state? Um, well, I have to listen to an audio book to do anything on the treadmill, but I don't, I think it's more because I'm challenging myself to see if I can, you know, because if I go to 2.9, then I got one more because I have dots. I only have two dots at 2.7 and 2.8. But if I go up to 2.9, I have three, you know, so I have that little graph on there. Mm -hmm. I have a very old treadmill. So you hit three things there, intervals, podcast, and challenging yourself. Mm -hmm. Those are like three of the 10 that I have on my list today. Cool. So when you listen to your podcast, do you listen to it when you're not on the treadmill or do you designate it just for treadmill time? Um, the only time I listen to it is treadmill and in the car when I'm driving. So... I have a playlist and I have a podcast that I will only listen to when I am doing my walks, my bike, whatever it is, because if I end, if I end my cardio on a good episode of something, um, I know people who do crimes, like the crime uh, podcast, oh, yeah. and they want to hear the next part of the crime. I tell them, I said, don't listen to it until you get back on, <laughs> because it's that little bit of incentive to make them want to do it again, that sometimes we don't whereas if I listen to the same songs whether I'm on the treadmill or not I get bored yeah so I the fact that. that you limit it to your car and your walking time is perfect because it's your incentive to either be in the car mm -hmm. or it's your incentive to be on the treadmill right the challenging yourself is setting a goal so your goal is to challenge yourself to get up to that 2.9. So you get your three dots. <laughs> yeah. And then that feeling, once you get to see that graph and you're done, is the reward. Yeah. So creating a goal and feeling the reward from what you see or what you feel after. Exactly. Valisa, when you're out and about walking, do you listen to anything? Do you, what do you do to keep your walk? less boring I will either listen to music like I'll put on my favorites playlist or um if I'm walking down the lane which is really nice when no one else is around then I might like talk out loud um you know and different things that I have going on that week or something like you know kind of that I can talk out loud and put it out there <laughs> without other people watching me talk to myself. Um, but uh, yeah, I would say most of the time I probably have headphones in and I'm listening to music. Do you set a goal when you go out for any of your walks or when you do anything conventional cardio? Do you set a goal when you start? I usually will um, tell myself like it has to be so many minutes. So sometimes, um, it might be just like, I need to go down and back four times, or I need to walk around this field, you know, for 20 minutes. Um, so yeah, it's not usually just walk until I'm done. I usually will have like a minimum. I have to do at least this much. In setting your goal or setting your intention for your exercise is important. Um, I'm doing a series on the bike right now. And every time we get on, she always asks, the, I it's the same instructor. It's a 12 week series. She's like, what's your intention for this ride? What are you either clear, clearing your mind of? What are you processing? Or what do you want this ride? What do you want to get out of this ride? So think about some of those things as you do your cardio that you don't always enjoy. Allow there to be a purpose behind it. 
Is the purpose of your cardio to make you feel good? Is it to say you did it? Is it to feel better, to look better? What is the purpose behind? Is it just to clear your mind? Is it absolutely nothing and you are just there to embrace the environment you're in? Think about what your intention and your purpose behind you doing it. So if you don't know why you're doing it or the reason behind it, you're so much less likely to do it. Like, I, I'll be honest, I got up this morning, I came down, put on a ride, I got going for five minutes. I was, I did not set an intention and I got off. I got off and I said, well, I, I got something going in my shoulder, but I got off and I was like, I'm gonna use that as my story as the reason I'm not doing it, but really I did not set my intention, which led me not to finish follow through. But I was honest with myself and that's why I got off. And that's okay. But I made sure to acknowledge that so that I don't feel guilty about it. I don't feel guilty about not riding this morning even though I got up and I got on. It happens, life happens. Things don't always go as we planned and that's okay. So if there are times when you set out to go do something, you set out to go to the lane and you only make it three passes before you're done with it, still acknowledge that you got out there, you tried to, and that it's okay. Just acknowledge it rather than coming up with, oh, I couldn't because my back was really hurting me. I, I could have pushed through with my little knot that I have going on, but that was the story I used till I got off and realized that that wasn't the reason. It was because I didn't want to, and that's okay, but I had to acknowledge it and accept that. So now that we'll go, I want to tell you my tips. Intervals. So there is such thing as an interval timer. I love it. It is super easy to use. Um, I will screenshot and I'll post it. I think I've done it once before, but I'll do it again. In there, I put, that's how I do everything. If I'm going to do it in my interval class, you can put the name, you can say, I want to work for 40 seconds, I want to rest for 20, and it dings at you. It tells you what to do when. It is awesome, you preset it, you can listen to your music, and it makes the time go by faster. Imagine every 20 seconds you're either speeding up or slowing down. That minute's going to go by a lot faster than your study. Two, it's going to be to get creative. Does not have to be those traditional things. Maybe that is changing your environment is getting creative that day. Instead of walking down the road, you're gonna walk on a treadmill. You're gonna walk around the property. Maybe you're gonna go to a golf course if it's not open. Whatever that looks like. Yeah, don't get hit by any golf balls. Um, get creative with your environment. Get creative with your music. Allow yourself to have a good playlist or a good podcast that you treat yourself to, that you're always looking forward to when you are doing these cardio movements. Um, find a buddy or find a group. So we do cardio intervals on Monday at noon and it's a fun class. Although I'm the only one talking, you guys are all there and I can see you guys all doing things. And I know when you see a group of people, it makes you want to work a little bit harder and it makes it not seem so awful. Mm -hmm. My mom walks, I think five days a week. She walks with a buddy at least two days a week. After work, she gets together with a friend and she walks because the buddy thing is nice. They debrief and they talk about something other than work. They talk about, they just talk about their separate lives because that's the only time they get to talk and catch up. So if you have a friend nearby that you're like, oh, we really struggled to get time in in the busy work day, schedule something for after work and you guys just go walk or go do something active. It's always great to go have food. And I love food, you know that, but being able to walk is just a nice way to incorporate both those things. Um, set a goal and feel the reward, acknowledge the reward and the feelings you have at the end. Make it a game. Maybe the game is trying to see how many zigzags you can get on the treadmill. Okay, I'm gonna make it a game. I'm gonna go a double and then I'm gonna go to triple. I'm gonna go double, make it, Turn it into something fun. Whatever your mindset is for that. Maybe you have a game board. Maybe you have a shoots and ladder game board. And every time you do it, you get to move your piece across. Use an actual game board. Make it, you flip a card. If, the, if it's a jack, you do 10 minutes. If it's a king, you do 12 minutes. 
Like there's so many cool things you can do just to get creative with it. Start slow is the biggest thing though, it is so many times we go from zero to a hundred because we have to do cardio and it has to be hard and it has to be something that we are out of breath and dying at doing. No, it, is, it does not. There is so often that cardio for me is I will stand here and walk at my desk because I can. And if I walk for, if I walk like that while reading an email for five minutes, my heart rates up because I'm walking at a good pace. I'm moving my arms. Great. I just got five minutes. I got my heart rate up. I got my blood pump. Then I felt good. So, and that was slow. Maybe I'll try six minutes next week, or maybe I'm getting on the bike and I'm just starting off by going through the motions. I'm focusing on my form. Same with your walking. Maybe you do your intervals and you, you're like, okay, I'm walking here. Now I'm going to power walk for only 10 seconds and then bring it back down. Start slow on whatever you choose to do. You're never going to go into gaga ball, chasing the ball all around. No, you're going to wait for it to come to you. You're going to chase when you need to, and then you're going to go back to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. So how is all that sounding to you guys? What is kind of sitting with you? What's kind of all over? How's it feeling? It's good. I like talking about the intervals again. Like we've done it and I enjoy that. It just isn't something that always comes to mind. Um, so being more intentional of doing that and, um, I was, I don't know, back in like January, was walking in the morning after chores, like weather was nice. And then it was like when I, winter was over and the weather actually was nice, I stopped walking in the mornings. So I'm trying to be more proactive and incorporating um, that again, because I enjoy it. I mean, it can be a 15 minute walk that it, I don't have to get through the zero to 100 and start off with like an hour run. <laughs> Right. And because you are outside, maybe one of your days you go to a, you go to a road that has a little bit more hills, change your environment, change your intensity. Maybe you don't go yep. for as long gonna, because the elevation's higher. Yeah. I was going to do that this weekend and I was actually going to publicly say it here. So that's like my accountability. Like I'm going to do it this weekend. I'm going to go for a walk down the road. You know, the weather will be cooler. So it will be more enjoyable. If I don't do, if I don't do my walking in the morning, it doesn't get done. So I just purposefully make sure I get it done no later than eight. I have to be finished. Lately, I've been able to get it done this week before seven. So it's the only way I can get it done. That's awesome. And after you do it, do you feel energized and ready for your day? Or do you usually feel like, oh, I need to go home and take a nap? Or you're already home. Or do you feel like, oh, I need to go lay down and take a nap? Well, I don't feel like I have to take a nap. Maybe in the afternoon, I feel like I take a nap because then, you know, after I've started doing some work and stuff, that tires me more than actually the walking part. And in those times, um, just think about getting up and doing a few stretches. Because it's all that energy will come from that blood flow. So if you know mornings are great for you, I'm a mornings person. Lisa, if you realize that your better time is three in the afternoon, make three in the afternoon your go-to time to go out and do your walk. Find the time that fits into your routine. It's also going to make it a lot easier to do rather than trying to force it where it doesn't fit. Right. So do you guys feel like you've re- that I've helped you kind of reframe some of your thoughts mm -hmm. on cardio. Definitely. I just don't want to think about it. And we don't. There are so many things that we're supposed to think about. Our sleep, our water, our food, our cardio, our resistance training, balancing life, home bat. Like there are so many things we're supposed to think about. Think about one. Master one of them. Get one of them in routine and down where you're not even thinking about it anymore. Then add the next one. That may take you six months. That may take you six years. That may take you six days. Whatever it is, start with one, get it down, get it dialed in, get it feeling good. 
you guys are all very good and are very knowledgeable on something in your life. Think about something in your life that you can do with your eyes closed that you know like the back of your hand. Once one of these habits become that, you know you can add something else. That is the feeling you want. Motivation is not something that comes and stays. I actually was talking to a guy before this, we were on a call, um, shout out to Ed. Um, we were talking about this and he said, it's not motivation that keeps me going to the gym every morning. It's the discipline. So think about that with our jobs. Do you, do we always want to get up in the morning or did we, if you had a different career, did you always want to get up in the morning, go to work and work nine to five and do all that? Probably not. Cause there are days when you don't want to do that. You want to have a relaxing day. Health and wellness is the same. It's all about discipline and it's all about creating those small habits time after time so that you can start ha having them in the back of your mind and not even have to worry about them. And then you slowly just keep building on them. I don't worry about my sleep anymore. Sleep is something that I'm, I'm good at. I don't worry. I don't stress about it. I know when I haven't got good sleep, but I do know how to, without even thinking about it, I can get right back on good sleep, like without thinking about it. I can get right back on water without thinking about it. Food, still struggle. Food is always going to be a struggle. Making sure I have all those balanced areas. I love cheese. Always going to love cheese. I love steak. Always going to love steak. Those don't always, too much of those over time cannot balance out right. So there um, are things that we always have to work at, but there will be things that kind of, kind of are just there and we can excel at without even realizing it. Okay. <laughs> I want to know biggest takeaway and what are you working on or what do you want to commit to that I can follow up with you with? I know Tanya, I followed, Tanya, I followed up with you last week after the call to see how your holiday freedom went and it sounded like it went great mm -hmm. um, so i will be following up with you guys whether it's next week when we're all on the call again or it will be through memo so biggest takeaway and what are you committing to slash going to start working on probably the biggest takeaway is i don't have to think of cardio as running. I mean, you finally got me thinking of it as intervals and maybe I should just walk up and down the stairs more. I love it. What are you going to work on? <laughs> me? Yes. Uh, actually getting the dusty doorbells, dumbbells out of the bedroom, which you, even though I watched your video, have not, I haven't done that yet, but I will. That's okay. One time between now and next Thursday. Just one. Okay. Easy. Just I can one. do that. Doesn't even have to be all three exercises. One exercise, one time. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. I love that. Valisa, what are your biggest insights and what are you committing to? I would say biggest insight is um, a few things I wrote down our small habits and being disciplined, uh, start slow, set goals. So um, changing that frame of mind again, like she said, cardio isn't running. So I can find different activities, um, but staying committed to it and engaging, you know, in it, have my goal set for it, but you know, finding ways to enjoy it too helps pass the time. So that's good. And then what I'll commit to is this week. Yes, there's a couple dirt roads by us that my my intentions are to go for a longer walk with some hills involved. So that will be a good way to push some cardio. And if and think about when you go up a hill, your pace does not have to be as quick. Mm -hmm. So if you're power walking down a flat road. And you're going up that hill, slow that pace down. Your heart rate is still going to stay very pretty equal because you're going up a hill and you're still having to work harder. Doesn't mean you have to keep the same power walk pace as we go through those. I love that. Um, can I ask what longer kind of looks like for you? Is that, are you thinking a few minutes longer? Are you thinking a certain uh, distance longer? What does longer look it's like than your normal? 
Well, I guess because the lane is shorter. So like to get a, you know, a mile in, I've got to usually walk like four times. Um, so in my head, so I'm gonna, I'll end up mapping it so I can get an idea of what the distance is. Um, but yeah, so my intent is it's gonna be um, actual longer distance and time to do it. Perfect. I love that. So I will check in on both of you guys um, next week to see how they are both going. Um, I do have, we have three new members in the group and I want to shout you guys out. Samantha, Tim, Casey, I am super excited to have you guys here. Uh, I know we are all, and I don't think I mentioned this in the beginning, but you get the most out of these calls if you are here with us. Think of all of that Tanya got out today. Think of all of what Lisa got out today. If it were just me here talking to you guys about some generic things and you're watching the live, do you think you would have found it as beneficial? <laughs> no, I love talking to you guys. I'll talk to you guys if you're here or not, but you will get so much more out of it personally than you just watching the replay. If you are watching the replay and you had any questions, drop them in the comments, reach out to me because I can help make things more specific for you. If you're having problems with this and you need some better ideas, I can definitely help you with that. Um, so last little bit of announcements, class schedule for July is posted. I am not going to be doing the events in the Facebook group. I felt like it was too much going on um, to alert people about all the events. If you really enjoy those events like hey there's a class starting in 10 minutes type of thing um let me know personally and i'll make sure to just put you on a different list and you'll get an email um if that if you're like oh didn't realize it was happening disregard that comment um <laughs> if you and if you're wanting anything specialized for yourself maybe you are at risk for heart disease maybe you are struggling to get around with your kids and you're feeling really out of breath Maybe you just ha have trouble doing everyday activities. You want some extra help. Let me know, reach out to me, drop a me or a help in the comments and I'll reach out to you guys. We'll have a little conversation. And I'll see what I can do to help you because I want you guys to live the best and fullest life that you can. We only have one of them. Why would we waste it doing things we don't enjoy, eating foods we don't like and not moving how we want to move. So any final questions for me from you guys? Are you guys feeling pretty good? Pretty good. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I will see you guys next Thursday, July 15th. Next week, we are going to be talking about what virtual personal training and virtual corporate wellness looks like. So if that has any interest to you guys on what I kind of do with my clients, jump on. Um, it, I've never really kind of gave an insight to what that looks like. So I will be sharing what that is next week. Um, and some of the other options that I have, if you guys are interested, I hope to see you guys there. Enjoy your weekend and I will see you guys later. Thanks. Bye you guys.